Welcome, uh, welcome back. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> well, because you're here again, we assume to see our review of Faye. We yeah. did our unboxing. Well, unboxing. And last night. Uh, and here we are. Uh, we've played a couple games. Yeah, we've played a few times. So here we are to give you our thoughts about With our Faye. Cleaning, a coffee maker. Our coffee maker is cleaning. It's coffee. Very it's nice. Very nice. You gotta have coffee with good, with a good tabletop game. That's this right. This one, an actual board game, as we talk yes. about a real board. Yes. Anyway, yeah. So well, we're here to review this. So, uh, just a quick and dirty overview of the thoughts. We really like it. Yeah, it's really cool. Actually, it's really, it's really good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a good game. Yeah. Um. So in it, right? Uh, you are you're sort of herding and jostling all of these. Um, these druids. Uh, druids around and they start off yeah. like this they this is this is how the start of the game looks and uh, and you know as the game goes on you move them around and they you know group up and then mm -hmm. once once you have let's say all of them grouped up and there's nothing around them then you they perform a ritual and then the ritual uh, ties to right ties to yeah. these ritual cards. Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. It's very yeah. simple. So a single yeah. turn consists of moving a druid and then... And then checking a, and if then a ritual takes place. druids can never move into a space that don't have another, another druid. Another druid. And then you can move multiple druids at one time and mm -hmm. uh, so on until they all become isolated and then things Cloistered, happen. Cloistered, if you will. You know, things yeah. happen according to scoring and then you... Grab these cards, which yep. progressively get more yep. worth more points if yep. you're in certain areas and so on. I mean, I think we said we were going to go through like all of this. Yeah, we're not going to go through, but you know, like a rules. good just I mean, kind of overview. If that's what you want, if people start watching yeah. these and they're like, give me the rules. Then but we'll do that but way. meanwhile, uh, you have one of these uh, spirit uh, cards here right. um, that are secret from everyone else. And every and they correspond to a so color yeah, of druid. You to, you're, you're one of the spirits. Yeah, and and everybody Nobody scores. Nobody knows who you are. Though. Yeah, no matter how many players you have, all five colors score. And, well, and there's up to four, so there's always one. Always at color, least one. Always at least one or more colors that no on one's the playing. board that you yeah that's scoring points, but but no one is playing. Nobody is playing, is yeah. playing that. Yeah, so that's basically the the loose gist yeah. of the game uh it's really great the art style's fantastic the art is very nice it's really wonderful mm -hmm. um i think the the sort of like map the board itself and then uh they have different regions on the board which then correspond to these cards of the different regions being cursed or blessed mm -hmm. which is either negative or not negative points right. but either no points or if it's it can blessed, be no, then it's because it can knock out one right. Of your it guys can take out everyone off the board if they're all if all five colors are grouped together. Right. It's a nice. It's a nice, um, quiet game. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a quiet and quick game. Like it's you yes. know you shouldn't have to overthink your move terribly hard. You have a little bit of that strategy, and there is it's that it's that simple yet deep. Like yeah, simple yet about deep. Liking it's those the mark of a, a good lot. game. Yeah, simple, simple and deep. Yet deep um, you know, and so uh, I really like uh, just to, like I said, I was it was the map, and then they tie into the cards. I really like the distinct art styles for each of the regions. Mm -hmm. You've got you've got this sort of like hilly. Uh, kind of like maybe a city in a hill sort of uh, kind of deal. You've got this like mushroom grove. You've got a cloudy forest, which is really nice. Cloudy yeah. forest might be my favorite. I just like the way the clouds and the yeah. pine trees. And I you saw got mountains. a review online of somebody that criticized the busyness of it, but I think it's I don't really think it's pretty. that busy. No, yeah. I, I mean it is. Like I mean, they were like, "Oh, it's kind of confusing with figuring out the territories." It's not really that bad. There's one thing that we had kind of a confusion about that we had to stop mm -hmm. and re, you know, and consult the rules and actually yeah. kind of. You know, look online. To You're see talking what about other the lakes and saying. rivers, right? Yeah, there's there's lakes and rivers, and when we first started playing, you know, this whole the whole thing is based on getting your druids isolated. Okay, so 
um, it says you can't move across lakes, but you can move across rivers. And so it was like, well, so this is, is actually it isolated a perfect case. if it's in this territory, but there's still a river. And I, we came to the conclusion through rereading the rules and consulting online that the, the, the rivers and whether or not you can move across the river doesn't have anything to do with it. They're isolated when nothing when else can move there in are empty or, yeah. all just empty space when there's no more no further possible moves can, yeah, yeah in in yeah according to their the right. parameters of movement right not you know and it doesn't really have anything to do with rivers and lakes so the rivers and lakes seem to be solely mostly just for separating these regions so that when you set up the game it kind of gives you that, like that there has to be one of each color. There, there's five areas in mm -hmm. a region, and you put one of each color there. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what else I really like about it. Um, just the, like the simplicity of the core concept. Mm -hmm. Like this is one of those games where, even if you don't understand how to win initially. Um, and you don't really understand the core mechanics of the game are yeah excellently simple, simple of just your turn is move a druid check to see if a ritual happened and that's it yeah that's it so and even if, if you're not makes a mistake it's not like it's not the know, end of the world go, oh yeah you can't do that and then you know whatever yeah it's, yeah it's not so it's a very low entry point, which yeah, again, which is, is great, nice, which is know? great because you know uh, that's you know uh, on the side of the box here, um, it's got the play time of twenty minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, in our experience, a lot of games uh, they claim a play time, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's yeah. far past whatever they claim. Yeah. And so when you know when you look at this and it says twenty minutes, in my in my experience, I looked at that and I said, okay, so it's twenty minutes when we're like aces at the game yeah. and we know it like the back of our hands and we're just playing it really fast, then it's 20 minutes. But actually, no, actually us learning it, yeah, yeah it, it's so, because it's, of that, yeah. like I said, that core concept of your turn is move a druid, check mm -hmm. to see if a ritual happened. That's yeah. it. It's really quick. Yeah. And I, I really like that because... There's still a lot of depth and strategy to be found. It is. It's, but it it's is a one quick of those game. really nice strategy games where it's not over the top with the strategy where you can't play if you don't fully understand it mm -hmm. or have a strategic mind. But then if you really do, you can start thinking in terms of, okay, so that area is this many moves away and from a ritual from that and i can see like which ones are gonna are have going to, to move score. and so i'm not gonna score that one yet because i want them to have to move it so that i can score the card so you know it, it ends up yeah. like gaining this yeah. complexity as you kind of understand what's going on it's kind of like chess in the way that like two beginners playing it's anybody's game mm -hmm. but like but like once you have a couple people that are really uh like familiar with it and then you put someone brand new in it. Like the people who are familiar with it, they're just gonna understand the higher level strategy so much quicker yeah. and, and take advantage of that that they'll probably win time and time again. Yeah. Until that new player, again, like gets mm -hmm. to that point where they go, okay, now I understand the higher level strategy yeah. involved here. Right. So it's, there's not like, so a review for this game is super awesome, like recommend. Super oh gosh, game. yeah, like, absolutely this is, I, I could see this as being like one of my new favorites in a way because mm -hmm. I really like this kind of game. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of um, like super, you know, into, you know, you have that like Uber fan kind of, you know, mm -hmm. and there's that element of like, oh, they want the super long, right, complex, right. complex deep, games. all the parts. This has You that. know, like the thing with Kickstarter games being right. like the, right. you know, I remember hearing some, you know, it just seems to be more and more and more stuff. Like it's just about the more stuff, the better. The like I, I don't really, like, I mean, of course those games have their place, but I think they have to be really stand out, especially mm -hmm. thematically, you know, and I really just like these very like tactile well, games where you're moving yeah. pieces a nice quiet like game where you can just like 
you know, interact and mm-hmm. and it and it's not like a million things that you have to read along the way and, and well you know, and, it's, and it's that's nice. what I was gonna say. This to me has all the depth and strategy of a big multi hour yeah. Euro game. Um but in a more condensed format. Like, I well, I mean, I don't know. That might be overstating the complexity of it a little bit because, I mean, I, I don't know. I see this... I, I mean, I know you always say, you, you know, every time we play these, like, two- to four-player games and it starts out with just us playing with it before we have other people over to try it with us. And you're always like, oh, I'm excited to play this with three or four people or more, whatever. Absolutely. I don't know. I... Personally, I I could be wrong, but I feel like this is one of those games that like while you could play with four people, I feel like it's really best as like a two, maybe three player game because I like that like quickness of the of the moves. I I like that it's a quiet game and I think when you bring more people into it then that ends up being like the quiet ends up being not as good because everybody's like just concentrating on what they're moving. Well, but that's what I know. was going to say though, actually was that I think this would be very good for the full four-player game because, again, the turns are so quick. Like, yeah. the turns are so quick. I mean, quick it could be, but all you, that, you know, you can get somebody that overthinks. and then... Sure, well, amps, but that's any game. You can yeah, have someone who true. overthinks checkers, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, again, not to harp on it, but the whole turn is move a druid yeah. or... Or, you know, a couple druids to a new thing, and that's it. And then... Yeah. Well, but I mean, okay, the other the other element of that, though, is I, I feel like there is, you know, a side to this game. Like, if you're like, okay, we're going to have people over to play a game, right? We're sure. going to have four people here. I, You know, there are certain games that, you know, either thematically or um, content-wise, you're like, okay, this is like a game to have people over to play. Like, yes. why don't you come over so we can play this game? And I don't see that with this. I feel like this is more of a game where if people are over and they're like, hey, okay, so what game do you want to play? I'd be like, oh, this is a cool one. You want to play this one for a little while? And then it'd be like, yeah, sure, yeah. why not? Well, but it's not like a... And it's and it's a 20-minute game time. You're going to play like a couple of times. Yeah, you're going to play a couple you're gonna rounds. And move on to something else. So I don't think of that as a filler game. I know that's a popular term out there but i don't think of those games as being filler games i just think of them as being like you get opportunities to play multiple games that way yeah but i don't know i don't think it has this the same like depth as like the euro games though i think i think it does i think it does and it's because of the hidden role Mm. it's because that's what it is for me that you know because so as far as as far as, like I said, the, the large Euro games or whatever, they have all these moving pieces. And the the Euro game is you're pretty much, from the set go, mm-hmm. you need to have a game plan. Mm-hmm. You need to have a plan of how you're going to score your points. Mm-hmm. And then that's your plan, and you need to stick to it with only minor deviations based on what your uh, other players are doing. Whereas here, it's... You have multiple paths to victory of moving different druids around and forming different things. And not even you getting these Mm -hmm. ritual cards, but other people scoring the ritual cards, which then you'll get points as Mm -hmm. well. And then hiding, like you said, hiding, especially on the two-player level, hiding your role here you know who you are who you're trying to score for so that the other player doesn't block you yeah exactly and as usual though with a two-player versus a four-player you know actual gameplay of these games you know i can see how different that because you know if it's two people there's three there are three colors that are meaningless yeah and there's really only one so i mean it's really kind of different then because you can be like, well, I'm scoring for these other three, but hopefully the one I'm not scoring for is the person next to me, I guess, yeah. or whatever. But right. um, I don't know. It's a uh, it's it's a cool game though. I like it a lot. These little these little guys are super fun and funky, and it's just a very it's like one of those types of like games that you're just like, gosh, how did I not think of that? Like that's you know, 
I was like, how did I not think of that idea of like, okay, you move it, and then those have to move together into another space, and you know, and they can't move into, but you know, it's like it's so simple, but then you're like, oh, that's really like it's different. I can't think of anything exactly like that yeah. in any of the other games in particular, which I also enjoy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice. It's a nice game. Yeah, love it. Art's great. Mm -hmm. Gameplay is great. The components are very high quality, nice nice plastic uh, druids, nice linen finished cards all around, nice artwork, nice box. I like the theme of it. I yeah, think the theme's it's great. Interesting that they, that's what I was saying last night. I think it's interesting that they chose that theme. Like, I think it's cool, but, you know, it's one of those, like, I feel like they kind of set it off as like sort of an outlier game in a way. Sure, with the with the Fey theming. Like, cause there's, I mean, you could you could do like any kind of theme. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't. Know, do you have uh, any final thoughts uh, for for um, Fey? No, I mean, I I think it's a definite um, buy for at least board game people. Like I think collectors. it's a, I think it's a buy for non board game people as well uh, because. It's simple. It's easy point of entry. Uh, and I, like I said, I think with the full four players, you're going to stay engaged the whole time because the turns are so simple and fast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I think it would be like great it. for families yeah. with, you know, young kids too because you got a nice, nice, you know, bright board, bright pieces. You know, they're fun to you just, just have you know. to explain to your kids what druids are. <laughs> just to move them around. Yeah. But. Yeah. And who doesn't want to have that conversation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember my mom and dad giving me the druids and the fae conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. I don't. I highly recommend fae. Yeah. It's good. I, I think it's really cool. It's you can find it at your local gaming shop. Hopefully. hopefully. How now? Brown cow. Recording. We are recording now, brown cow.